All right, guys, so I wanted to make a video because I haven't seen a lot of these on YouTube. It's an older Reliant 16 inch wood bandsaw, as it says right there. Um, I picked this up off Craigslist for a guy, uh, maybe like 200 bucks a couple years back. When I had seen it, what caught my eye right away was it was a 16 inch bandsaw. Everything else I had seen was a 14 inch or a 10 inch. I didn't want to spend a lot of money at the time. So this one really caught my eye. And what I also noticed was the person that owned it before me had actually upgraded the guides to these Carter bearing guides. And I have to say they work excellent. I've never had a bandsaw with the little blocks that come in them. Um, so this is all I know and I'm super impressed with it. So uh, again, it's a 16 inch wood bandsaw, one and a half horsepower motor. And if you're gonna buy something I'd highly recommend more horsepower like everybody else says on YouTube. One one horsepower I don't think will cut it, one and a half. I know it doesn't sound like a lot being a half extra horsepower, but this bandsaw, when you raise the guy all the way up, I believe it will give you about 10 inches or so. Give me one second and we'll find out. So let's see what we get. So right underneath the guide, we get almost 10 and three quarter inches to the bottom of the bearings. And I've milled up a bunch of wood on my own. I got a Husky 562 XP that I use for milling with a 24 inch bar. And I've cut some cherry and oak. And oak is extremely hard, same with some spalted maple some basswood, um, I think I've even done a little birch on it. But when I go to cut these boards, sometimes I'll have that board literally a quarter inch below these guide bearings. And this saw with this blade, it's a three quarter inch blade. It's a three, four PTI, and it will rip through that wood without issue. You know, and for being a, I don't know, a Chinese or made in Taiwan bandsaw. I have to say it's actually pretty decent quality, especially if you're picking one up for 200 bucks. I'd even say $300 wouldn't be a bad price. The one thing I did do on this is I did trim off the end of these because it's in a garage. I don't have a lot of room with all the other woodworking tools and they were just poking out too far and I never needed to adjust the fence over to this side of the table. So I just trimmed them off so it'll go from 15 inches over there to 10 over here. So it's about, I don't know, let's say 20 inches long. Um, it is a cast iron table. The one thing I did have to upgrade on this, and everybody needs to be careful when you put on a thicker blade, is the tension, to tension the blade. Inside of here, you got your flywheel. And what ended up happening was it was cold out, this thing being old. This, I'll call it a yoke up here. When you adjust that, it's pushing on the wheel. And what ended up happening was, is it snapped from the tension of the blade. So I went online and I found one, I believe for a Delta or Milwaukee. And it was made out of pot metal, what was originally on here. Granted, this is pot metal too, but people say it's a better quality. And I had actually upgraded the spring in the back to, I believe they're a Cobra high tension spring. So it was wound better. The one that was in there was shot. I don't know if the people had it before me always left the saw tensioned or not, but it does have two flywheels on it. Let's see, they measure 16 inches. And it does track actually really, really well. Um, has a tiny bit of vibration, but I would probably say the vibration is coming from the bandsaw not being perfectly flat on my garage floor. And I also put a couple washers here. There was one that came with it. I don't know if they were original or not. It just kind of pushes this back to keep everything from vibrating. So, so screw this back on. The 
one other thing that I dislike about this saw is the fence on it. This is a piece of extruded aluminum and I use a big woodworking clamp to clamp it down. There's a little angle piece on the back of this and I just clamp it down to this because it was maybe three and a half to four inches tall and that's not very tall for a fence especially if you're trying to rip down bigger pieces of wood. It's easy to kind of lose your balance with the piece and end up with a crooked cut. And the other thing I noticed was it wasn't, I had a hard time keeping it perfectly square. So with this on there, if I need to make any adjustments, it's only clamped up here in the front. As if I see it start drifting, it'll allow me to correct, but usually it'll cut pretty straight. Um, and I do have multiple blades for it. If anybody wants to know what size blade, this will give you an idea. The blades that fit on here, because I bought one a while back and threw the sticker on the front, so I want to forget. This is a 9 foot 4 inch, 1 fourth inch by 0.25. <clears throat> and that was a smaller blade for doing finer work. I was making small little bandsaw boxes with it, just goofing around when I first got it. And you need to be careful with those blades because they don't need a ton of tension. I over tensioned it one night. As I was cutting, ended up snapping it. So I went online and I'm like, I don't want to buy another blade. This thing only had like an hour worth of runtime on it before I broke it. So I ended up basically welding it back together. I went on eBay and bought some powder that you mix essentially as a flux. And then I used a torch and torched it and then just hit it with a grinder ever so slightly to make it nice and smooth. And it's actually held up for three years now. I've used it on and off without it breaking, so that was my first time ever attempting that. I have to say it's been a success. Over here, you got your on-off switch. Um, and that's really it with the saw. It is a full cast iron frame to it. The bottom part is a, I guess you'd call it stamped steel little pedestal that it sits on. I mean, it's kind of solid, but it does have a little flex, as you can see the saws bouncing back and forth on it. What I thought about possibly doing was taking a piece of plywood and setting it over the top and bolting it then to this bottom little pedestal to see if it would kind of stiffen it up a little bit. Because it's maybe, I don't know, 14 gauge steel down there. So let me tension this. And then we'll make a couple cuts with a saw. I got a little piece of scrap maple here. And how I like to tension the blade may not be the right way is I'll crank this down and then I'll poke on it right here. And you want to see it deflect just a tiny bit. Just a little bit more. So right about there, I usually run it like that. And then we'll tighten that down. Here's just a little scrap piece of maple that I had. It's all dirty. Let's look this up a little bit higher. I was always taught from watching YouTube videos Keep about, you know, a finger's worth underneath your work surface that you're cutting on. I mean, sometimes I'll max this thing right out when it's all the way up. Um, it's not the right thing to do, but it is what it is. So, let's turn the saw on. Clear it up. It's going to sound loud. It's in a garage right now. It's closed. piece of extruded aluminum the way I got it I could have came up with something better versus using a clamp um, 
I just really haven't used this saw in a little bit because I've been so busy with everything else. But we're going to cut off a little bit over a quarter inch just to give you guys an idea of how the saw works. So tighten down the fence. There's a little knob right here as usual and then you got the back knob crank down on the rear of the fence. So let me start this one. the first cut and as you can see with that blade on there and the way the fence is set up this piece of spalted maple came off of there and I have to say it's probably the best that I've seen it looks like it just went through the planer I mean there's no you know little chatter marks or I wasn't overfeeding it I mean it feels like it was hit with 220 grain sandpaper and I have to say I forgot what type of blade that is it's got like a brown mark going through it I believe it was like 50 or 60 bucks but it cuts beautifully and it doesn't lose track because it's a three quarter inch blade i've tried it with half inch yes they do resaw a little quicker but i feel like they you really have to crank them down to make it hold the tension at least on this saw so i prefer using a thicker blade like a three quarter inch for any sort of resaw work with a three to four tpi just to clear the sawdust as you can see it made a bunch of dust what I typically do is below I got a couple small bungee cords and I have one of those little cyclones that goes on a five gallon bucket. So I'll hook that up to my shot back and I'll run uh, the hose underneath. And it does a pretty good job of cleaning up most of the dust, but I didn't want to have all that hooked up and running. Um, it's already loud enough just having this right now. But as you can see, it cut through that relatively quick. You know, it, it'll cut through something all the way up to the guides, maybe a little, little more time, but you know, if you're interested, I'd look on Craigslist for one of these. The 16 inch is the way to go. The 10 inch and the 14 inch just seem way too small for any sort of practical work. This thing works great for resaw. And what I do if I have an eight or a nine foot long board that I just milled up to trim the bark off the edge or just to square up an edge before I throw it across the joiner, is I have in the corner over there a little uh, roller stand. So I'll put that up back behind the saw. I'll move my table saw out of the way. And as I'm pushing, it'll go across that. So, I mean, I've had some slabs up here that weigh 115 pounds and the table will handle it. It's got two knobs underneath to lock it down. Uh, and I'll mill up some slabs and build a few things. I built a couple little tables. Uh, a stool, some bandsaw boxes over there out of some uh, scrap pallets. I built a little four foot uh, router planer table for doing slabs. So I built a few different things, you know, and the kids will come out here and I'll teach them how to use it, you know, with my help and they'll build odds and ends that they want to do. So I just wanted to get this up on YouTube so everybody can see it because I've seen maybe one or two videos on it. And I have to say it is an excellent saw. So if you see one, definitely jump on it. You know, if it's less than 300 bucks, 
even if you have to spend, you know, another 75 to 100 on these, you'll be happy with it. And that's all I got for you. Take care.